Good morning from Kansas City. I didn't think today was going to be all that exciting, so I didn't start filming this morning. But I was just driving and then I heard this loud pop. And uh, as you can see, I got a little oil leak right there. So, what that means, ladies and gentlemen, besides me getting my suit on, is that uh, I'm going to try and see what's wrong with the engine. <laughs> Hopefully nothing serious. It's not a terrible, terrible leak. But I just uh, was texting Badge and he said, check the turbo rubber hose. I probably blew it off. So, sounds pretty simple. No big deal. Nothing to worry about. I'm safely parked over here. It is a Sunday. Businesses are closed. Um, so yeah. Let's get to work. Alright, here's the situation. We still don't know what's going on. Uh, where's my flashlight? Of course. Uh, it's right next to me. Why? Where it always is. Alright. Let's see what's going on here. So, we got, uh, we got moisture in there. I just sprayed some brake cleaner in there to to get it all kind of cleaned up. But there's definitely oil leaking in there from some place. Um, it's not the turbo, so that's good. And it is leaking onto the ground down there, so I'm gonna have to clean that up. Um, uh, so the prognosis is it's down several gallons of oil. The way this engine works is that if it runs out of oil, it the engine stops working. It doesn't actually damage the engine because the, how do I put this in simplest terms? The oil provides the pressure for the injectors, which have the fuel, to spray into the engine. So nothing actually gets harmed. If you run out of oil in a 7.3, um, the engine just turns off. That's it. So that's not a huge issue that I'm low, but I do need to fill it back up, clean it back up, run it, and try and find out where the oil is coming from and see if I can either meet up with Badge or if I can do this myself. I'm in Kansas City, by the way. Badge would potentially be in Salt Lake City, and that's, oh, about a thousand miles away. All right. Here's the update. I was low one gallon of oil. Filled it back up, sprayed a little brake cleaner in there. I'm um, also going to hose down the engine on this side with brake cleaner as well. Just gotta rip all that off. I'm leaking a couple ounces in a couple of miles. So, that's kind of a bummer. But uh, that's all right. Everything's fixable in life. Where are we at here? So, I used about four cans of brake cleaner to uh, clean the engine. Now it's time to go for a 20 minute drive, pull over and see if I can spot where the oil is coming out of the engine. Otherwise, you can't really tell. We're gonna go from O'Reilly Auto Parts to O'Reilly Auto Parts, just in case something happens. But uh, that should give it plenty of time to uh, do its thing. Worst case scenario, I have roadside assistance. to O'Reilly number two. We got ourselves a nice little leak right there. Uh, left to right, that's uh, six inches or so, maybe eight. And a uh, considerable amount of oil coming out of this thing right now, unfortunately. So, um, I'm not really sure what to do. I'm gonna pull this uh, doghouse off and uh, take a peek. Good news, found the leak. <laughs> um, So this leaves me with a question. 
How do I fix it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this engine is like buried in there. Um, not impossible to fix. Uh, but that is, it's all the way in there. I'll point out what the, uh, the culprit is. All right, let me zoom in first. All right, you see that round thing right there? That shiny round thing in the very center of the screen? Yep, that thing. That thing is leaking. I don't even know what that is, but it is leaking and it's filling up this little, what they call the valley of the engine, which is between the, uh, you know, the cylinders, uh, that side and that side. So it's kind of pooling up and then leaking down and dripping on the ground, which I don't like dripping on the ground, but that is just a fact of life. When you have a vehicle, you're gonna drip at some point something, unfortunately. Sorry, Mother Earth. Upon further inspection... Upon further inspection of that clip, I think there's an O-ring. It's a little rubber thing attached to, I don't know, some bolt? And I think that is the issue. And guess what? I have the O-ring. It's in the back. Badge gave me a few of them. And for this particular engine, it happened, it's a very common thing. It's no big deal, it's just a pain in the butt to access. So I'm going to leak my way over to Salt Lake City, catch up with Badge, and uh, then we'll tackle it. And then it'll be ready for, uh, ready for Brian to take around, you know, good old United States or wherever he's going in this thing. anymore <laughs> which means we're in Kansas uh, it's funny the past uh, week or so I've gone through more states than uh, <laughs> than I ever have in the bus and uh, sadly it's uh, look, it looks like it's gonna be the end of, of this tour of this episode but uh, very excited for things to come um, although you know deals Feels not done until it's done, so, uh, uh, but yeah, definitely looking forward to, uh, to the future. I'm a little disappointed that I couldn't visit a lot of these, uh, Midwestern states, but something I've been thinking of while I drive through all these places and, and see ways of life that are just so foreign to me, even in my own country, things like, uh, farming, I think it'd be fun to stop and, um, do a little work on a farm or, you know, drive a tractor around during the harvest or something like that. So, um, it'll be a good chance I will be looking into things like that. Maybe just even tagging along. Uh, just, you know, if somebody's a, you know, family farm or, or, or something, just to, just to learn and, and, uh, be exposed to, like, the behind the scenes. I mean, Take, for example, when you go to the store and you buy some bread, your only interaction with that bread, your only knowledge of that bread is a brand of what it tastes like and, you know, what aisle it's on. Uh, frankly, I think it would be pretty fun to go and, and see where, where things like that come from, where it's uh, grown, uh, who the people are who, who do this. Uh, the, you know, the, the people who don't really get all the credit, the hardworking farmers of America. So, um, that would be pretty fun to do. Maybe in the next bus. I also would like to do more um, uh, restaurants, things like that. Um, so that could be something as well. But uh, yeah, good times ahead. Good times have been had already. All right, looks like we're in decent shape here. Uh, oil pressure is looking good. We're uh, cruising right along in, uh, I think we're back in Missouri. We're gonna hit Iowa and then Nebraska. And then uh, head over towards uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. I think I already said that, but oh well, get a reminder. Um, yeah, inter interesting day. This is, <laughs> as you know, I've had little 
hiccups here and there, um, you know, on the road, uh, different sorts of things, flat tire, you know, little, little mechanical things here and there, but for the most part, um, I really haven't had, I really haven't had any big issues. I mean, even this isn't a big issue, it's just a small little, little O-ring that needs to be replaced. Um, so that is why this 7.3 liter turbo diesel is, uh, is a pretty good one to get. It's funny, I was <laughs> texting uh, my buddy earlier, and uh, I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I met this, this tow truck driver with a, a 6.0, which is a newer version. Went through like three engines uh, in like 200,000 miles or something like that. And each engine, I don't know, I, I think it was like $10,000 each. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not my budget. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for a school bus, or just, you know, pickup truck, if you want a diesel, 7.3 is a good one. Uh, if you don't believe me, just, uh, just Google it. <laughs> and, um, also, I, I couldn't help but relate this to something that, um, that, that I, I read on social media earlier today and it was like, you know, people on Instagram and, you know, always try and portray like these, almost like a uh, clothing catalog, perfect life, everything's well, um, you know, and uh, as you can see, I mean, you know, the, I don't know, this wouldn't be like an amazing day, right, in, in somebody's life, but... Um, I think the thing that I, how I can manage this and other things, you know, I mean, just life happens. There's just always going to be something happening. Uh, and uh, really, the only thing I do, it isn't really, I mean, it's normal for me, but it might sound a little simplified, but I just always see the bright side in something, like, or, I mean, something goes wrong, like, how do you fix it, you know? It's kind of why I like tinkering on the, the bus, too, um, because nothing is forever. I'm not forever. You're not forever. Forever isn't even forever, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, you know, relating it to that, like, um, yeah, this is like a, a real moment here, but, you know, instead of dwelling on like, ah, you know, I'm in a position where, you know, it's like, okay, how do we fix it? How do we move forward? How do we have a, how do we make the best of today? And how do we learn a lesson, right? Like, I would love to learn how to rip apart that stuff and, and, and fix it. So, I mean, because I have the O-ring with me, it's only a couple dollar part, 